I want to point out, an important point, point on the slide is that a rise in your banned neutrophils in particular is particularly indicative of bacterial infection. So when we have an increase in your bands and SEGs, we get excited and we say, okay, this looks like a, like a shift to the bacterial end. We, we definitely get excited. But particularly bands have a lot of weight and that's because they don't belong in the systemic circulation. So if you have a patient who has a band count of two or three, that's significant. If you have a patient who has a band count of five or six, that's also significant. But if you have a patient who has a band count of nine or you know, 10 or 12 or you know, 15, that's huge. In your life, unless you work with septic children all the time, the likelihood of you seeing patients who have band counts you know, in the dozens, 12 or higher, is pretty low. You're gonna remember those patients in your clinical practice because they are very few, okay? So that's really, really important. Uh, I'll tell you a story just for a minute. I, was, I occasionally will review medical records for attorneys and give them opinions as to nursing standard of care. So they, they want my opinion about whether or not in this particular case, when a child was either injured or, or died, uh, was the standard of care followed? Um, and so I'll review a case and I'll give you, them my opinion. I reviewed a case several years ago um, involving an infant, an older infant, who had come to an ER with RSV, uh, with what appeared to be RSV bronchiolitis. Um, and I believe that everything in the, in the record indicated that this patient did present with RSV bronchiolitis and that's how the patient was treated. Therefore, they didn't draw CBC with differential because normally a patient who, who appears to have RSV bronchiolitis, we wouldn't normally get a CBC with differential unless we were otherwise concerned. And it was an older infant, it wasn't a neonate. Um, the patient came, went to the floor and the patient quickly decompensated and ultimately uh, developed bacterial sepsis. Uh, went to the ICU in that hospital, was subsequently transferred to a, a major children's hospital, um, coded several times in the ambulance on the way, et cetera, and, and ultimately, unfortunately, died. And the question was, this patient became septic um, with a major, a major bacterial sepsis. The question ultimately was, you know, was there, you know, did, did people miss something? Again, in this case, I don't think that they did. I think this patient had RSV bronchiolitis and unfortunately developed bacterial sepsis, which is like chasing a ball down the hill, as many of you know who care for children. Um, but what was interesting in the record, when I sat and, and met with this attorney, I said, you know, my opinion is that the standard of care was followed. I said, however, when the patient became very ill and they ultimately draw, drew a CBC and a, and a blood culture, when the CBC came back you know, shortly thereafter, the patient had a very high white cell count and the band count was 18. I've never taken care of a patient with a band count of 18. Okay, um, and I've taken care of a lot of sick patients and I work with labs all the time. Um, this was a very high band count and very significant. Now, again, in this situation, I do not believe that they needed to draw a CBC before they did. I think they drew the CBC when it was indicated and unfortunately, it was just a little bit too late. However, and this is the message for you, had someone in the ER, and I don't think they needed to, I don't think there was any negligence, but had someone in the ER looked at this patient and said, I can't put my finger on it, but I just don't like the way this kid looks. There's something about this kid that's not right. I know he has bronchiolitis RSV, but let's get a CBC, just to be sure. And that patient had had a white, high white cell count and had had maybe nine bands at that point, what would they have done? They would have gotten a blood culture. They would have worked this kid up. They would have put him on antibiotics based on a CBC. And that would have been because an astute practitioner like you, like you the bedside nurse, and you guys do it all the time, say, I just don't like the way this kid is clinically appearing. There's something that's not right. There's something that doesn't fit. And based on that, that child would have lived. Do I think that anyone missed that in that patient's case? I don't. I, but my take home point is that nurses save lives every day, and you know how you do it. You do it by those clinical symptoms that you notice, and you scratch your head and you go, this isn't right. You take a CBC, you get a CBC drawn, and, and this is the difference in a patient's life and in their care. So that's, that's how you would use that.